Knocked out, going under, sedated, put to sleep. There are plenty of creative terms used to describe the experience of being put under anesthesia. But how does anesthesia actually put you to sleep? Crazy thing is, we don't actually know for sure. But as you'll soon see in this video, sometimes it can go horribly wrong. Anesthesia is one of the most common performed medical procedures out there. More than 60,000 people undergo anesthesia every single day in the US alone. Despite its prevalence, we still don't fully understand how exactly anesthesia works in the human body to put us to sleep, we just know that it works. The word anesthesia means loss of sensation, and millions of Americans undergo anesthesia every year to prevent them from feeling pain and to keep them still and unresponsive so that doctors can safely perform life-saving operations that would be incredibly difficult, not to mention painful, to do on a conscious patient. We may not fully understand how anesthesia works, but that doesn't mean it isn't a real-life medical miracle. Before the late 1800s, the only drugs that we had to help patients through painful procedures were things like alcohol, opium, and hemlock, hardly foolproof methods. For centuries, medical procedures like tooth extractions and fracture repairs were performed with very little, if any, pain relief for the patient. But beginning in the 1840s, scientists discovered that some gases, like sulfuric ether and chloroform, had sedative effects. Anesthesia was born, and medical treatment became wildly less painful and traumatic than ever before in history. Modern anesthesia cocktails are much safer and more reliable than these first gases were, but we're still at a loss to explain exactly how they work to put us to sleep. There are four categories of anesthesia, local, regional, sedation, and general anesthesia. Local anesthesia involves injecting a small amount of the drug into a specific area. This is the type of anesthesia you get at the dentist's office before a filling or at the hospital before they stitch you up. It's also used after major surgeries to help with pain, as other stronger anesthesia begins to wear off. Local anesthetic numbs only the targeted area and wears off relatively quickly. Similar to local anesthesia, regional anesthesia targets a specific area of the body. Though it's stronger than local anesthesia and can block sensation to an entire section of the body. Epidural injections to the spine that are used to numb the lower body during labor and femoral nerve blocks that are injected into the femoral artery in the upper thigh to freeze the entire leg for orthopedic surgery are just a few examples of regional anesthesia. Both local and regional anesthesia leave the patient fully conscious. They don't put you under. We need stronger stuff for that. Regional anesthesia is often combined with sedation. These twilight sedation drugs make the patient more relaxed and unfocused. They don't force the patient into unconsciousness, but many people do fall asleep under sedation due to the drowsy, sleepy feeling it induces. Sedation doesn't affect breathing or reflexes, making it less risky than full general anesthesia. And it also wears off more quickly. When you picture a patient lying unconscious on the operating table waiting to be cut open, what you're picturing is someone under general anesthesia. General anesthetic affects the entire body and works in four ways. It immobilizes the body to stop it from moving during the procedure and acts as an analgesic to prevent the patient from feeling any pain. It also works on the brain by sedating the patient into an unconscious state, and it even induces amnesia to ensure the patient will have no memory of the experience. In reality, put to sleep is not the best way to describe what it's like to be under general anesthesia. It's actually more like being in a drug-induced coma. It's a reversible coma that's nevertheless a coma, says Emery Brown, a professor of anesthesiology at Harvard Medical School. While under general anesthesia, an electroencephalogram or EEG test shows that brain activity decreases down to levels very close to what we expect to see in cases of brainstem death. It's no wonder patients find the euphemism put to sleep to be a less scary description. So what does it actually feel like to get put under with a general anesthesia? Donna Penner's story provides a glimpse into the mysterious experience of being under anesthesia, as well as a potent warning about how sometimes things can go terribly, terribly wrong. Donna, a 45-year-old mother from Manitoba, Canada, had been experiencing some worrying and unexplainable symptoms, so her doctor recommended an exploratory abdominal surgery to see if they could find the cause of her mysterious issues. On the day of her surgery, Donna was understandably nervous to be put under, but she was eager to get to the bottom of her unusual symptoms. She met with her anesthesiologist, who talked her through the process and assured her he'd be right by her side the entire time. 
Since Donna didn't have any of the risk factors that could lead to a complication, she was a non-smoker, not overweight, with no underlying medical conditions. He assured her that things should go smoothly and that she wouldn't remember a thing when she woke up after the operation. The only downside was that Donna had to fast for six hours before her surgery to ensure that her stomach was empty and to reduce the risk of vomiting or choking while she was under. Finally, Donna was prepped for surgery and wheeled into the operating room where she was greeted by her anesthesiologist. As the surgeon was busy getting prepared for the operation, the anesthesiologist placed a mask over Donna's mouth and administered a cocktail of hypnotic agents, opioids, muscle relaxants, sedatives, and cardiovascular drugs to Donna. He held her hand and comforted her as she drifted into unconsciousness before inserting a breathing tube down her throat to help her breathe and prevent choking. Since the anesthesia relaxes breathing and coughing reflexes, he also placed three sticky patches on Donna's chest, connected to an electrocardiogram or ECG machine to monitor her heart rate, secured a blood pressure cuff on her arm, and clipped a pulse oximeter to her finger to monitor the oxygen level in Donna's blood. True to his word, Donna's anesthesiologist would remain by her side throughout the entire operation, carefully monitoring her stats and ensuring that she was getting a continual dose of anesthesia drugs. But despite his watchful eye, there was one thing her anesthesiologist couldn't see. Donna was actually awake. Horrifically, Donna had woken up just before the surgeon was about to make his very first cut. She was fully conscious but immobilized, unable to speak or to signal to the room full of doctors and nurses that she was awake and aware. She remained frozen in place on the table as the surgeon sliced open her abdomen and explored her insides, poking and prodding at her organs for hours. All the while, Donna could feel everything. Every excruciating slice, every horrible movement. She was in terrible, agonizing pain, and she was helpless to do anything about it. She couldn't move or scream, and she was sure she was going to die. I thought, this is it, said Donna. This is how I'm going to die, right here on the table, and my family will never know what my last few hours were like because no one's even noticing what's going on. Miraculously, Donna survived her ordeal, though her recovery was long and painful. Even once her body had healed, the experience left her with lasting psychological scars. She developed post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, as a result of her horrific experience on the operating table, and suffered from anxiety and panic attacks for years. Donna remembers having a full-blown panic attack one day when out shopping. She had stayed in the car while her daughter quickly ran into a store, but when Donna realized that the car doors were locked and she was trapped inside, it triggered an intense flashback to the day, more than a decade prior, when she had been trapped and helpless on the operating table. To this day, Donna cannot stand to wear any clothing that's tight around her neck because it makes her feel like she can't breathe and takes her back to her ordeal in the operating room. No one knows exactly why Donna woke up during surgery. It's estimated that as many as 1 in every 1,000 patients are believed to wake up at some point while under general anesthesia. More recent studies show that this number may be even higher. It's yet another of the many mysteries surrounding anesthesia and exactly how and why it works or doesn't. Thankfully, Donna's terrifying experience is rare. For most patients who get put under with general anesthesia, the process goes smoothly and their surgeons are able to do their work without the patient having any awareness of the trauma happening to their body. When they wake up, usually about an hour after the anesthesiologist stops administering the drugs, they have no memory of the experience. It can actually feel quite surreal. The last thing they remember is the mask over their face as they drift off into unconsciousness, and when they come to in the recovery room, it can feel like no time at all has passed. It's normal to feel a little out of it as the anesthesia wears off. Patients can feel emotional or loopy, many lack inhibitions or behave in an exaggerated manner, and can have slurred speech for a few hours after anesthesia. If everything went smoothly, it can actually be quite funny, at least for their loved ones and nurses. The process of coming out of anesthesia is medically quite similar to the experience of a patient who is woken up from a vegetative state, which makes sense when you think about the fact that being under anesthesia is essentially being in a medically induced coma. The stages of recovery are pretty much the same, though they happen quite a bit faster when coming out of anesthesia. Side effects are common after undergoing anesthesia. Most of them are not serious and will go away on their own within a few hours to a few days. It's normal to experience vomiting, dizziness, and headaches after waking up from anesthesia, and a sore throat or even a chest infection can be expected as a result of the breathing tube that was used during the procedure. Confusion and memory loss are also quite common and usually resolve quickly. That said, in very rare circumstances, more serious side effects can occur, including nerve damage, a severe allergic reaction to the anesthesia drugs, awareness during surgery like what Donna experienced, and even sometimes death. 
Even though we know very little about how anesthesia actually works, it's an essential if imperfect tool in modern medicine, and it's not likely going anywhere anytime soon. Thankfully, scientists are working hard to improve our understanding of how anesthesia works and to develop more advanced techniques to make anesthesia more effective and more targeted. Anthony Hudetz works in the Department of Anesthesiology at the Medical College of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, and he's just one of many researchers working to better understand and improve anesthesia. Hudetz imagines a world where anesthesia is less of a hammer-to-the-head knockout experience and more of a delicate and specific tool. We can also develop better anesthetic drugs that would target consciousness itself because today's anesthetics affect every cell in the body, Houdet says. They suppress the heart and they affect all the major organs. They affect the circulation, they suppress blood pressure, heart rate, and this is tolerable, but we mostly operate on injured people and sick people, and in that case the side effects of anesthetics are undesirable and should be minimized. Anesthesia researchers are learning a lot by collaborating with coma and sleep researchers to share knowledge and develop more delicate tools that can help across multiple fields. Hopefully this will mean fewer harrowing stories like Donna's, and one day soon we might actually know how anesthesia puts you to sleep. If you thought this video was shocking, you'll want to be sure and check out our other videos, like this one called The Most Painful Things a Human Can Experience, or maybe this other video is for you.